we'll cut our strings off we had it tied with now this stuff growed I mean this stuff dried <laughs> fairly quick this year no problem now this is the music garlic I ordered this last year if you've seen the videos you've seen me sitting basically right in here and uh, we went through this and separated all the cloves and we came out with several. I had ordered five pounds of music garlic. And what I'm gonna do today is we're gonna try to select our seed for next year. And I'm gonna do this fairly quick. I'm not gonna I'm going to try to clean it a little, little better too. I just take my finger, because your first joint there is right at an inch. I just hold it at the top, cut that off right at the top. Try to get, try to leave them about an inch of uh, stalk. You don't want to cut your garlic right down to the tip top. Nothing to it. Nothing to it. Music garlic. Now, the weeds <laughs> encroached in my garlic this year. I want to blame it on the wet weather. That's what I'm going to blame it on, but <laughs> I'm going to have to take a little credit for my neglect myself, I guess. But I'm just going to try to clean this up a little bit. I'm not going to do all this garlic today. Just want to check. Well, this this garlic, music garlic, naturally it would because it's bigger. But uh, I mean, elephant garlic's bigger than this. This dries out, cures fairly quick. But it got to the point that I had to get it out. This, like I say, there's weeds growed up all around it. I don't know if anyone else has ever had that problem or not. But I should have been out working it, even if I had to do it in the blustery weather and rain. Now that one's, I mean, you've got to watch. Ain't nothing you can do. You'll lose a few. Occasionally, I, I would say, you can't save ever. Every one of them's not gonna thrive. I guess you can see what I'm doing, which ain't nothing really to see. I just lay my finger right there at that, and that gives me something to measure by to get you within range of where you need to be. Or where I think you need to be, anyway. I'll have a pile of stalks there. My weird wigs or whatever you call them, I don't like them. I don't know what they are, some kind of bug. Runs around, it's got pinchers on one end of it. I don't like them. I don't like them. Now there's a pretty good little pile of garlic to start with. Something to start with. Now, I take my knife and go right around them roots. Just shear them roots off. The paper on that is the outside paper's got all the, the dirt on it that when it come out of the garden. So when you shell that down, you've got all the, the crud. You wanna be careful because you can go too far. I'm not worried about it too much. I'm not too worried about it. Be careful, you'll have every bit of it off though. You don't want to take it all off. Not all of it. About like that. Now you can take these shears. Get right up again there and shear that off. Probably easier that way. Ain't a bit harder, that's for sure. Just roll your hand around a little. 
I see there's a, a bad spot in that one clove right there. These is, they're dry. They are dry. It's like I say, just a little of that old, the worst part of the dirt off. You don't have to get it all off. It's just a, it's just a job that uh, never ends. Well, it does end, but I'm saying it's almost year, around the clock, around the, all year long. All year long job. The more that paper you leave on there, probably the better it protects it. I'll tell you, I think it's safer to use these snippers. See this one? This one has lost all of its paper on the outside. This one was too far along. So there's nothing basically there. This one needs eight. I like the girl garlic. Pretty, you can make it as pretty as you want. You pull the papers off, but I tell you, I think a lot of the taking most of that off makes pretty little heads of garlic. Now see, here's one that opened up, lost most of its paper, and it's got a bad spot right there in that garlic. Bad one, a little bad spot. Most of this music garlic and stuff, of course I've got quite a bit of it. I just ordered five pound, one pound of P Pahoski garlic. Yeah, this stuff's plenty dry, enough to get bagged up. I ordered me some bags to kind of store this stuff in. Keeps, I think it might be a little safer to, on the garlic, you know. Maybe it'll make it last a little longer. Some of this stuff's little. I heard one fella say, save your best and eat the rest. That's the way you do that. I'm going to shave this off. On these big ones. I hear a helicopter up there playing around. I don't know what he's doing. It's like I said, this is music garlic. And like the old feller said, you save your best garlic that you grow. Save your best and eat what's left, I suppose. Got a few that's got little skint places in them there. But now what I've got right here, I would assume is probably about a fourth of the garlic. Now you can see where this opened up here. Probably I hit that in the side there is what I done with the shovel or the blade when I was digging this stuff. Split, split them cloves there, a couple of them open. When you do that, it'll still dry out pretty good. This one here has lost every bit of its paper under the circumstances, I think by growing up in the weeds, um, I think growing up in the weeds restricted this garlic. I know it did. I don't have to guess. I know it did. Ain't nothing, to tell you the truth, ain't nothing uh, likes to live in competition. I'm talking about trying to thrive and strive. Garlic don't like it, corn don't like it. Ain't nothing like it. Ain't nothing like it. Some of this, like this right here, it's just, I don't know how to do. 
I've never, I've grown this before. I won't, I, you know, I've grown music garlic, but not on the scale of elephant garlic. When you've got something small like this, um, just common sense will tell you that it, it can dry out quicker than uh, it would if it was bigger, close. You've got to admire the people that grows this stuff and, and sells it to the public. I'm, I'm talking about them pretty clothes. It's untelling how many clothes of garlic, if the truth was known. It's untelling how many heads, not cloves, heads of garlic that these uh, companies go through to select out the quality, the pretty garlic that you get in the store. Of course now, just like I say, they know how to do it. They know how to do it, but well, that's their profession. It's hard to beat someone that does something every day. You can't beat them, because if they weren't doing it properly, they wouldn't be doing it every day now, would they? <clears throat> Doing pretty good. Let's go get us another bundle. And uh, see if it's any better. Ain't been up there that long, to tell you the truth. Ain't been up there that long. I'll try to do this fairly quick here, quicker than the other. Quicker than all the other, old boy. Yeah, a lot of this little stuff. There's no need to be, take too much patience with it because it's going in the, in the pan, man. It this didn't do well this year, I can tell you. As far as I'm concerned, my music garlic, it's like I said, I don't think it did. I don't think it done well. It, uh, and it, it, under the circumstances. And of course, a lot of stuff has to get acclimated to your, to your area. This is first time this particular strain of garlic here is growed here. I know there's lots of things that way that uh, does better after it gets acclimated to you, to your climate, your soil. This stuff come, was grown up north of me. I can't remember where whether it's Indiana or Michigan or where it, where it came from, to tell you the truth. I can't remember. It's like I say, that don't have to be perfect. You can use your finger to measure it with if you want to. Or you can just kind of relate to what it is. Huh? I just want to show you what I do here to this garlic like this. If you're trying to make it, most time I don't worry about it. I mean, if it's, unless it's real bad, it's not a bit of use. As far as I'm concerned, it's not a bit of use. Of course, it does look better to get that old dusty stuff off. That old dirty stuff. Yeah. It's pretty too, makes pretty, it's purple. You get down so far, it's kinda got a purple haze to it. We're not worried about it, are we? Let's get it off of there. Let's get the nasty off. Cause it's coming off sooner or later. Now, yeah, here's what I like. I like the pretty garlic that's, uh, 
a good head. This is what they all are to look like as far as I'm concerned, about like that right there. But they all don't. Yeah, garlic's fun to grow. If you've never grown any, and if you like garlic, I mean, there's lots of people grow it and sell it. And you can sell it. You can grow it and sell it. Cash crop. They must have been four or five growed together, isn't it? How'd that happen? I'll tell you how it's happened. I've had a little bitty clothes, and I've thrown three or four in one pile. I don't know how this stuff will keep. Let's see. Oh my goodness, July. It don't have to keep too long, does it? You can go fast with this stuff. You don't have to sit and try to manicure it too well. You knock that off. I'd say you could twist it off. Oh, I done that and didn't I? You twist that off, you come out with cloves. You've got to grow different varieties. You find one that you like the best, one that that hangs in there the best, one that st stays closed the best. See, lots of these little ones here go to the table. There's one I cut completely in two. Now it dried. I mean, where it was cut, is dry as a bone. It'll heal itself. And uh, if that didn't get that germ in that clove, that'd still grow and make a garlic plant. It would. That's right. There's another one I've hit. Ripped the side off of it. Boy, I must have been in a hurry. I must have got in a hurry. So the garlic, when you go through here like this, if you twist that off, that root like I just done, what you're doing is you're breaking it, you're just breaking all your cloves loose. And I've done that before. I should have known better. Which it don't matter. We got lots and lots of garlic. I'll tell you what's happened. Let me tell you what's happened. When I ordered this garlic, I got some garlic that looked kind of dark like that. You got a lot of garlic that was opened like that. And I got a, a few that was like that. And when I ordered them, I know that's what I was getting. Broke, I was getting ordered, getting cloves too. Cloves. It's for seed garlic. I didn't care what they looked like. But I'm beginning to think I'm beginning to think I'd been better off to have ordered I know I would have. The best the best heads that I could have got like that. Ordered that and uh, not this, not this, and not this, and not this, and not this, not that, but these. You see the difference. That's a lesson that I already knowed. But I, I didn't, <laughs> I'm not talking about nobody, no, no companies, no people. That, actually, I went back to look, the people that I bought these off of must've got tired of growing garlic. I couldn't find them. I couldn't find them. Just gonna rip that them two clothes off, and uh, we'll put them there or there, and they'll go into the house and be be ready to be consumed. Now, 
I hate to keep harping about those 15 little clothes that I found out there in the garden. They were small. I don't even think. I don't even. I might. Let me see if I can't find one here to show you. Of course, you can go back and look at the videos. Right here. Right here. And I think, yeah, that's the one I just twisted the thing. And I'm going to open this up. This little head. Them little heads that I pulled up, there's two or three of them, about the size of this right here. Right there. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to pull a clove out because I think they was mighty close. It's mighty close to the same size as these right here. Yeah. And they were a little bitty clothes. Look here. I'm going to lay this right. Look at, look at that. Size of my thumbnail. We're talking about little clothes. Little clothes. And I saved those. And I planted those. And I wound up with... I wound up planting 15 of these. And I got 15 plants. I pulled one up. And opened it up and checked it, and that's the reason they're still out there. For some reason, when I pulled that one up, the cloves weren't even filled out in there. I mean, everything looked good, but they it just it, it and it had divided into cloves, but the cloves were just starting to grow in there, just starting to fill out. So I waited. I'd say it's been a week and I pulled another one uh, a couple days ago hung it up out there in the greenhouse and uh, I just actually took it in the house today just to where I could watch it it is every bit as big as this it went from this little one now we're talking about from that little size to one of these so what I'm saying is people can tell you that, uh, oh, don't plant that. That's a little bitty one. Don't plant it. I'm telling you right now, one that size right there can make that in one year. I planted it somewhere around October and in June. Well, actually, it's still there. So they're still on the ground. Not these. I'm talking about the, the 15. But they was that size, and they it's just mind-boggling. I'll have to show you when I pull those. Let's say there was 15. There should be 13 left in the garden. So don't don't be afraid because you've got garlic that's a little bitty clothes if that's all you got don't 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 think that you can't plant them and they do well because they can just according to what that little baby gets <laughs> while it's a growing but now you'll see right here there's a lot more little ones than there are big ones in this 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 pile right here there's a lot more uh, smaller ones than they are big ones. And uh, I mean, even the ones that, like this, I, my, in my mind, I'm looking at elephant garlic. Let me go get one. I go get one, bring here and show you. We got the look. I know we've all seen this, but we're gonna do it again. We're gonna go get one down here on the end. I like to get an elephant garlic. There should be some down here, not this hung up. I'll get a good one. Let's go over here. They're all them fine. I like them outside here. I just want to get one. I get this one right here. I'll get this one. I'll clean this one up for you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. That's what I'm saying.
but it's naturally going to be bigger. It just naturally is. But when you're used to growing this garlic this size, <laughs> and uh, then you get off onto this other stuff. I'm not saying nothing bad about the other stuff at all. I'm just saying, my goodness, it's there's a big difference. A big difference. And this stuff takes longer to dry. See, that's still not dry on that side. And that's what worries me about this stuff. You've got to work. You've got to watch it. And I have, uh, I have before ripped them apart. Cause from here, and that's probably where that's laying to get another one in there. You need, you need to move them occasionally. Cause when they're, you hang them up wet for leaned up again another one wet, could get, create problems. But I'm going to keep a digging at this right here and ripping these papers off. See there? Slimy, slimy. I don't like that. You let that go. You just keep letting it go like that. And you could very easily... See, now I'm opening this wide open here. I'm opening the side of this up to let that moisture out of there. Now that clove is all right, but the, the skin that's wrapping around these right here, I'm going to rip this out. Let me get this off first. This is a good example of what I'm talking about. While you're looking at your garlic hanging there and the stalks and the leaves is all turning brown, you ain't eating your leaves and stalks to start with. Your concern is this head and and right where this was at no doubt it was probably laying right up again another one and that's it's already drying it will dry you get there it'll discolor that it'll discolor it but that it, what happens is that at that wrapper if it can't get moisture out it can it can go south man and uh it can go south on you. Now I'm going to rip some more of this paper off. And that and it's wet. It's wet. See, this elephant garlic a long way from being ready to come down. Be a long way. Now, if you take it down, if you was to take this down and decide I'm going to bag this, you can. You can, you can do it, buddy. But you better take the cloves apart. If you just take that whole head and throw a bunch of them in on top of each other, You'll lose some. You'll lose some garlic. So I'm just going to rip this right up the side here. And I'm taking. What I'm doing is just un, unwrapping those cloves in this big head of elephant garlic. Unwrapping the cloves, letting it breathe, man. Letting it breathe. Now I'm not tearing the skin off of those. They, the skin on the. Uh, the individual cloves. This one has got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six cloves. Six cloves. Now you could leave that like that and that would be fine. It, it would go ahead and dry out and be good. It sure would. See, now here's a leaf that's going in this individual one. There's a leaf right here, or, or another wrapper. And what the, I'm gonna pull that and see what happens. And it broke off. But what's happening, I'm gonna take this apart. This right here, there's a clove. Here's a clove, two cloves probably break off. Yeah. So there's two cloves. Now here, it, 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 that's divided, see. This clove right here is laying in between them, separates them. And right here on the side, this part right here is, is uh, uh, rottening right here. 
So that right there could cause a problem. You get a hold of your garlic, break this baby out like that right there. Get that out of there, a big juicy stem. And then you just break that apart. Gently, carefully. Now you're right back to a green garlic that, uh, and you can see where this is a little mushy, mushy, mushy. You just get that off there. That'll dry in a, in a few minutes, that'll dry. Any, uh, if you run into a problem, is what I'm saying, and you will if you grow enough of this, you just gotta watch that. Or you could let that go. Now, it wouldn't have destroyed every bit of that garlic. It wouldn't destroy it at all. But uh, I see in my skidster that I've got a little bird going back in there, and it's got a nest in there. So I'm, the deal is those little birds can burn that to the ground. I, I, I set one afar and like to burn it up one time. Birds go in there and build nest on the motor. You don't, if you, you better open that door this time of year and get the straw off the motor because there'll be bird nest in there. Anyway, let's not get on bird nests and skidsters. <clears throat> so, that little clove of garlic here, and there's an the elephant garlic. <laughs> So here's one of the biggest heads that I've done today of the music garlic. And here's one clove of an elephant garlic. I like elephant garlic. I also like this, this garlic. So anyway, let's quit procrastinating and get right back to what we was doing and finish this. See, now that right there, that's, that's shot, I think. Yeah, that clove, something's got into it. If you go back and look, I was sitting here going through this when I ordered it, checking it out, and I come across one, and I said, you know, I'm not planting something like that. And I tossed it. And, uh, and we'll do the same to this one. Now there's a little clove. I'm gonna open this because if something ain't looking right here to suit me. I'm gonna open it. Yeah, see here? That's whole head of garlic. Has had something in it. What? Don't know. Nematode, don't know. Something in that garlic, it was, unless it's just some kind of bacteria, that whole little head is useless. Useless to me. I don't want nothing to do with something like that. I really don't. Now, I got and ordered some of these bags and I just ordered them because I've got some friends that uh, <laughs> a friend that's no longer around was he's dead, died. Was talking about another friend that's still alive, but he, he's, he's about as good a friend as the one dead. He was talking to him, he said, he's the only man I know in town that can blow up an onion sack. And I got to thinking about that. An onion sack, full of holes, but that cat can blow it up. And you know something? He wasn't far from telling the truth. He wasn't far from telling the truth. Cause he is windy as a, 
It's, it's Chicago. So I'm just going to ease these down in here. There's two. Look at them good. Three, four. Five, six. Seven. Eight. Get in it now. You don't want to store something that's bad in with the good. You don't want the bad with the good. See, this is, this is, this needs opened. This needs opened. It needs open, and that's what it's gonna get. Yeah, see, there's one that's, that's a, that, that, that's all right, but it's, uh, you can see the side right here, mushy. Not, I'm just going to ease that off, scrape that off, where you can see. There's a little bad spot right there. I'm going to dig into that and see what that is and where that goes. It stopped there. And it stopped there. It was pretty good sized clothes. But, uh, they they were gonna get they were they're they're in bad shape. Something what I have no idea. Something a worm a bug has went down the side of that and ate into that. But you think well I'll just dig him out. Well you won't find him. You won't find him. I don't know what does that. Anyway, we'll eat them. Now, there's the out of that garlic. And, and I, you know, I can't say that because that's a good one. Let's go through this. <laughs> Beyond a shadow of a doubt, seed. Now we're going to go through this and we're going to look. See, that one's cut. We'll put it in that pile right there. Well, it, you know, this caused that one clothes cut and it's dry as bone. It's fine. We'll save it. No, we're going to eat some anyway. We won't eat that broken one, but we'll. We'll go through here and look at these and fill of them. And we're selecting the clothes. You fill of these. And uh, the ones that are opened up and are a little boogery looking is going over there. They some that you just don't want in the bag with your with your seed garlic. Not really. Let's just put it we'll put it right in here at this. This is our music garlic. Oh not all of it. Maybe a fourth of it. And this garlic right here will go, it'll go in the house. Now this garlic I just took apart, it's barely a little sticky at the, it's already drying out. So that's how you save this elephant garlic. If you feel a little mushy, get that pulled apart and then we'll keep just fine. And that's what you plant back. I'm gonna get another one. And we'll
we'll try yet. Now this garlic right here should have been a lot bigger. There's no doubt. It's just something that's got to be done. Well, does it have to be done today? Well, if it ain't done today, it'll have to be done tomorrow. 10.30 last night. It came a little share. Pretty good little share of rain. Nothing to take you out of a drought, but come pretty good little share of rain. And I've had some live catch trap set over there for months. Just waiting. Just waiting. For the inevitable. Well, it cooled off just a little bit last night. Temperature wise. <laughs> Uh, and Mr. Kunis, the old Mr. Kunis come looking around. I guess he had chicken, kind of had chicken on his mind or something. So by having your trap set and ready, been there for months. No bait. You can take them traps and just put it to corners of your chicken pan. Just put them at the corner, up against the fence. Old Kunis, he'll get to walk in the fence trail or the fence, you know, won't me in. And if you've got your trap set right, he'll just walk right in it. He thinks you're running down the fence. The more chickens that he smells, the... <laughs> I guess the faster he gets to moving. Some of this garlic is just... <laughs> it just didn't do it, man. It just didn't do it. Look at this. But there's, there's one. That's about like them ones I pulled up. Lord have mercy. But, but I'm telling you, those ones that I'm talking about, by me saving them, planting them in October, they made some pretty big heads of garlic. There's one thing about them, if you don't plant them, they won't grow. If you don't plant them, they won't grow. Well, ain't that amazing? Who would have ever thought of that? We're getting there. But you wonder why, when, you, when, you, when you're buying garlic, and you get you see garlic, and people got it priced different. Oh, them's grade A large premium. <laughs> well, yep, them's the few that grow and done the best. Order you order you five or six bushel of them big premiums. Well, I'm sorry, there's kind of a shortage on them and we're just about sold out all of them. I didn't fertilize these. I didn't water these. All I done was planted these. And that's a fact. And maybe that's why they're a little bigger than they are. There's one I'm cutting to. Maybe I should save that and make me a broom. So. This is all the, the music garlic. Now, of course, it's like I said, five pounds. I ordered five pounds of that. And I've already, 
I've got my five pound back already. There's lots of, lots of garlic, more here than you think. It's just little, the volume. I mean, you know, you get uh, quantities of garlic, but the volume, the size of the garlic is, is small. But now it's flavorful. Now these, it's opened up, like this one, it's opened up, it goes right there. That's the first thing we're gonna eat. There's no way that you wanna get, you don't wanna go through all, all this problem of getting your garlic to this stage and then rushing through. Let's rush it, rush it through. Just get her done, throw it in the bag. You don't sort this, cull this, and get all this, get all this ready, separate it. And then you have to figure out how much you're gonna plant next year. I can tell you right now, that little pile right there would make a pretty good little garlic patch. But I'm assuming, and I may be wrong, I'm gonna assume that this very garlic right here that we grow, that we ordered now, we ordered it and brung it in here. I'm going to assume that next year, this same garlic, it'll be bigger and better than it was this year. Bigger and better. Don't know. Might not be no next year. I'm just saying, acclamation. I believe that that's a fact. I know it is. I've bought taters and I've grown taters and I've saved taters and I've replanted taters. And if you think that your taters won't get adjusted to your ground, I'm talking about the, one, the seed potatoes that you save, there may be another explanation to it that I'm not thinking about, but I don't care what color you paint it. There's something that makes a difference. I don't care what kind of brush you use to paint it. Just remember it, you're getting painted. When you look at this pile of stuff and you pick them up and they look pretty hairy and little and when you get done manicuring them a little bit here, they change their looks. Something about the dickens out of me. I ordered this little apparatus that's supposed to keep mosquitoes away from me. And uh, I, I ordered it, and then I got to thinking about it, and I got to, I almost canceled the order. Almost canceled the order. And I thought, well, you know, there ain't nobody else out there hardly that'll listen to what someone else says. <laughs> the British is coming, the British is coming. So anyway, I decided to go ahead and leave the order placed and then do a review, my, my review, my own opinion. But now, I've done that before and didn't do no reviews on stuff, but I've ordered stuff and I look at the reviews and I think, ah, because if you read them real careful, you can kind of, you can kind of distinguish if you've got half a brain that uh, a lot of the reviews are kind of biased and You've got probably members of the companies that's doing reviews and stuff like that. You can't always listen to uh, someone else's opinion on stuff. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you my opinion of why. Because these people that's not very, <laughs> they're not very, uh, mechanically inclined 
their ability to assemble, disassemble things are uh, lacking. That alone has a bearing on how things turn out. For instance, I ordered this little generator and I thought I'd fire it up and run it before I put gas or put oil in it to make sure it ran okay. I just I, surely to God, people don't. But I'll assure you, if you talk to the company of some of these little generator companies, that's happened. <laughs> Lord, am I. here I'm <laughs> way off track of what I started saying a while ago. But this, like I say, I ordered something to keep mosquitoes away from me. I read a lot of reviews after I ordered it. I almost canceled it because of listening to a lot of people's reviews. Then I got to thinking, well, I'm, I, and then I got to looking at reviews. I got to looking at the ones that were doing the reviews and stuff, and they were inside the house or inside a tent, or which would be okay, but. Their surroundings didn't match a, a, a review that would put something to, to the test. And then I seen people that looked like they was in Alaska in mosquito seasoning, or season, <laughs> mosquito seasoning. And uh, they were swarming, my God. You know, anything. I, a fire gets so big, it's hard to, to get throw a gallon of water on it and put it out in it. But anyway, there was lots of mosquitoes. And they put that little thing out, and they did admit that it probably helped a little. And I thought, well, helping a little in a... <laughs> an inv inv invasion would normal circumstances might be a lot. Anyway, I ordered, uh, what's it called? Um, Thermosail backpack. It's what it goes on top of a little propane tank. It's supposed to work. And the reason I ordered it, of course there's a breeze blowing right now. And if a breeze is blowing, they say that well, naturally it would. It just, it just puts off little whiffs of smoke or vapor or whatever you want to call it. It contains that stuff that runs in mosquitoes. Out. Well, if the wind's blowing, you know, it's going to blow the stuff away. Most of the time, I've discovered if there's a breeze blowing, it's breezy. You don't have too much trouble with mosquitoes and bugs, no one. I'm gonna try it. Most of the time there's a breeze of some kind, so if it's not the wind blowing, of course wind's wind, I guess, anyway you look at it, but a lot of times these things cause called thermals late of the evening, early of the morning, if you're on a hillside or but now I've heard people talk about these little thermosails. I think it's what they're called, thermo, thermosail. Pretty sure you got people. They think you can clip them to your jacket and just walk, and they'll put a 15-foot dome around you. I can tell you right now they won't. I'm not expecting that. Be nice if they would, but lots of little garlic, which is fine. It don't matter. This stuff's pungent. I mean, it's not like that. It's if you took a little bit, one of these little bitty cloves of elephant garlic. You might, you might as well have a leak or something, you know. What I'm saying is it don't take a lot of this. It's a flavor or something, you know. I think it's an enjoyable thing to grow. It's garlic. and It's an, addi ad an addiction, I suppose. You sit here and go into a trance doing this. Because you can sit here for a while repetitive things over and over and over. I don't know how many they are, but every one that you see here, whether it be little or whether it be big, counts as one. All I got here, all the the garlic that I got, out, I'm talking about out of this music garlic. I'll look again. I think that's all I know it is. Now I've got 
about half as much, not even half, don't you? But that Pahoski garlic's bigger. It's bigger. If I feel like it, I'll, I'll dive into a little of it too here. Just according to how I feel, I get this done. I know I'm not running into near as many uh, problems with this. This batch here, as I did that first couple bundles, and those first couple bundles were when I was using that machete. And I must have got that machete a little closer than I thought on, on some of these and cut some of them. Not these, but I done that. I thought, well, I'll just plant some now, early. Didn't wait till October. And I growed some pretty good sized garlic. Now that was the elephant garlic. Growed some pretty good sized cloves. I mean, heads. I grow no cloves. If you want to call it one big single uh, thing. So when I, I planted big big ones, and I planted cloves, and I got bulbs more or less. So I ordered again five pounds of this music garlic, and I've would be safe to say. Now you order the garlic and then you take it apart. Of course, this ain't took apart yet. Yeah, if you grow, if you plant one and get one, you're just spinning in the mud, really, ain't you now? You're not getting ahead. You're not getting ahead. Now, there's garlic out there that grows that way. It grows one, one bulb, a bulb like. I think it's called Solo. S-O-L-O, -O, solo garlic. And uh, I, I thought about ordering some. And then I thought, no. Unless there's something that I don't know, unless there's something that must have a good taste. I think it's Japanese garlic. Pretty sure. I'm getting there, people. Now you sit right here, right before dark. You won't sit here without spraying down with mosquito repellent or something, you know, like that. Yeah. That's why I ordered that little thermosail. It's called a thermosail backpacker. I've got about a dozen more here to pop off and I'll be done. Seeing if the wind blowed like it's blowing right now with the thermosail, you couldn't, if you think that that, it, you better have it upwind of you or you ain't gonna be accomplishing nothing with one of them. You have to factor that in. The problem with this garlic right here right now is grass and weeds growed up around it. I'm 99.9% .9 positive that's the problem. That's why it didn't get no bigger than it did. We'll change that next year in October one way or the other because uh, We'll run a little experiment. I've got a load of wood chips they brung me here a while back. And what I'll do with that wood chips when I put this garlic down, I'll, uh, I'll mulch it with wood chips and that'll keep the weeds and the grass down. And I'll guarantee you the ones that gets mulched, now I'll, I'll mulch, I'll mulch two or three different ways. I'll mulch some of it with, well, I don't know if I'll have it then or not. It's grass clippings. And then I'll melt some of it with straw. And I'll melt some of it with wood chips. And we'll see how she rolls. Okay, there's one more. Let me eat it. Let me eat it. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and take her back and Put the rest of her elephant garlic in it. Not elephant garlic, it's music garlic. Eh? Just take your time, Mary Roy. You know, this stuff ain't too cheap and you buy it. I'm talking about the seed garlic. You buy a bunch of seed garlic. It's according to where you buy it. It can get pretty expensive. Now, I'd be safe to say there's a couple of pounds probably right there to go in and eat. Now this, oh goodness, that's, I don't know what that'd weigh, 15, 10, 15 pounds. 
probably. And then we've got this garlic right here that we can definitely eat now. We'll clean it up as we're eating it, kneading it. This is seed garlic and there'll be garlic there to eat too. Uh, okay, I'll take this too. Well, I done broke it apart. We'll take it in and I'll eat that too. That's the elephant garlic. And that is the, the harvest of our music garlic. So I'm gonna feel safe to say without weighing that, that there's a pound and a half or two pound of garlic here that we can eat. And I'm gonna say between 15 and 20 pounds maybe. I ain't good at guessing stuff like that. I know that we've took five pounds. We've created yourself at least one pound, more like two. And then I'm gonna say 15 pounds. So from October till now, we've increased our volume to 300%. Okay, that, that's our music garlic. Starting with five pound, run it through a season and not the best, not the best uh, growing season we've had on it.